it took us about three days. And we said, we feel at home here. This just felt right. I am so happy that I raised my kids here. And it's 450 a month with everything included. And we're ocean view. The main reason that we were drawn to Bocas del Toro was because of the amazing archipelago and because we're sailors. Cheryl Scott and my husband Richard. And we've been in Bocas a little over four and a half years now. We started researching probably seven, eight years before that was our first trip to Bocas. We moved from Dallas, Texas, so 180s. Well, it was a bit of uh, an adventure when we uh, realized that, yeah, eventually we would be able to retire, which we never dreamed we could. We looked at each other and says, well, how do you want to live? And we both said, on a beach. On a beach. Uh, we actually looked at the Gulf Coast first because we're Gulf Coast babies. Between the hurricanes and the flood insurance and the prices of the houses, we said, well, no, we can't live here. And um, then we looked at Costa Rica, which I think a lot of, they have great publicity. So that's where a lot of Americans end up going first. And everybody said, oh, don't go to Panama. Oh, don't go to Bocas. It's dirty. It's nasty. There's litter every, oh, don't go to Bocas. Ookie, ookie, ookie. It didn't work out that way. <laughs> we, we said, let's go to Bocas. Yeah. <laughs> so our next trip, we came to Bocas and spent three weeks. And um, yeah, there, at that point, there was a lot of litter and there was a lot of trash. And I, I do have to say our community has made fabulous strides in that way. It took us about three days. And we said, we feel at home here. This just felt right. We felt comfortable and safe. Yeah, and, and Costa Rica was beautiful, but we never felt completely safe in Costa Rica. And of course, having the same currency was a huge plus. And we met some expatriates. And there is a wonderful expatriate community here. We call ourselves our uh, Bocas family mm -hmm. because, um, you know, you, could, you don't choose your family, but you choose your friends. And But we behave like a family. We're so supportive we work, and helpful. Work together. We decided, well, this is a big deal. We better be sure. Mm -hmm. So we spent about the next six or seven years, every vacation, we go to a different place in Panama. And the last year before we retired, and of course by that time, retirement's real. I mean, you know, you're selling stuff. You're already getting ready and- You're preparing worlds. We, yeah. <laughs> and we were, we were nervous. Yes. And of course everybody we knew thought we had lost our minds. So we came down here and by the second morning, I remember because we were close to Simone Bolivar Park and looked at each other and went, this is it. Because we still had that we're home feeling in our gut. So here we are. We bought it four years ago. It's three bedrooms, three baths, which is a little unusual. Normally you have fewer bedrooms or baths. And we paid $315,000 for it. One of the reasons we bought it was we have a view of the ocean from up there on the deck. And another reason was this was part of the botanical garden. This was the palm garden section of the botanical gardens. And we have since trimmed a few trees that needed to be trimmed. And we've undertaken some remodeling. And we're very happy. We feel comfortable, we feel safe. We have friends. We know which grocery stores carry which things on which days. <laughs> <laughs> I ride my bicycle into town occasionally. I've joined a salsa band. <laughs> so we're trying to fit in. We think we're we fit, fit in. in. Yeah. We think we're fitting in. <laughs> and we were really convinced that we wanted to be on one of the outer islands. Uh, we have a, a beautiful view here, but drop dead views, that's the Outer Islands. And most of the people have, you know, this beautiful coral reef right off their dock and crystal clear waters and it's gorgeous. And we thought, oh, this is what we want to do. 
and we actually went and looked at several houses, yes, which we were drop dead gorgeous. But what? <laughs> a couple of things. One, you are completely dependent on your boat, and you better know. Now you better not only be an excellent captain, but you better be a really good mechanic because you don't know what's going to happen. And I'm not much of a boater. I can admit it. And and of course you you're dependent on solar. And so you better be good at, at working with your solar and everything. And you better be good at fixing everything yourself. Now, they have wonderful communities that help each other during extremely bad weather conditions, which normally only last a day or two. But still, you, you're not going to come to town. You're not going to come to the grocery store or go to restaurants with your friends or get to a doctor. So we decided that, in, you know, with our ages and our abilities, it just was not right for us. But our one criteria was with I, and he goes along with me, I've got to see the ocean. So when we came and took the first view of this house, it was like, oh, I think this will work. And then the house is very comfortable, so it works. And it's handy. We're five minutes from the middle of downtown. If we wanted to go to the hospital, we are a minute from the hospital. Uh, we're half, kind of like halfway between the town and Bluff and halfway in Drago. We've got city electricity. We've got all the pluses, but we've got the quiet and the nature surround that you get further out. So we're pleased. We also have access to city water. We are hooked up to the city water, but we catch the rainfall. We have three large, large tanks, which is more than two people need but we have no need for the city water. That's what I call an insurance policy. Just in case, one day, there's a drought. One day we might turn the valve on. <laughs> Just it. <laughs> we put the car on the ferry occasionally and go to the mainland. We like to go to the second largest city in Panama, David, because it's a four hour drive from here and they have stores there that we don't have. <laughs> Certain things can be purchased there that cannot be purchased there. Focus is not for everybody. Um, it, it's our paradise and we don't want to live anywhere else. But you have got to be flexible. You've got to be patient, creative, and willing to ask for help. Um, and we have a wonderful community here that is very open to helping, you know, like standing by. And with wonder, we've all been in what, whatever it is you're going through, we've done it. It's very easy to spot the people that come here thinking they can just recreate the life they had uh, from wherever they came from. And uh, by God, they're gonna make it happen because things always do for them. They're not gonna last. I have lived the vast majority of my life um, in small towns and they're always very, normally very helpful, very supportive communities. But I've never lived anywhere like Focus. I mean, it's just, it, it's wonderful. And uh, I know when we have friends and family visit, they go, oh my God, you're friends. And that's what makes life worth living. I discovered Mexican Train, which is quite popular here. And it's a um, kind of crazy domino game uh, played with a gazillion dominoes. It just became a thing. And now we vary between six and 10 every Tuesday and it's sacred game day. <laughs> People plan their trips around Tuesdays. And um, we normally have uh, two or three men playing with us. And uh, when it is just all the women, it can get Getting pretty noisy. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so we stay busy. You could stay oh, busy every night of the week, if you so desire. Hi, my name is Sunanda, and I am the owner of this restaurant called Om Cafe. And I live here in Bocas del Toro in a place called La Iriega. I've been here almost 20 years, and I was born in India. Uh, when I was five, I moved to Toronto, so I lived there most of my life until I came to Bocas to start a new life. I have two children, I have a girl and a boy, and I am so happy that I raised 
um, or am raising my kids here because they have a sense of freedom that I don't think they would have had back home and they have a life that is very free in the sense that they meet a lot of different people and they have a lot of friends in a small community so they're always taken care of um, they're happy children they get to be outdoors a lot which is really important and um, they're just more confident i think because of it because they meet so many different types of people so i think it's amazing to raise children in Bocas. school has always been an interesting thing here somehow it always worked out we um they used to go to a little private school uh, international private school called the tangerine school then they when they grew out of that we continued to go to our we used to kind of started our own little private school but because of the pandemic i couldn't afford it anymore so then we did homeschool last year and this year remains to be seen. So it's always a, you know, always a surprise. So we'll see. Uh, we haven't decided yet for this year. Challenges in Balkas. Perhaps sometimes uh, challenges with employees, especially having a restaurant. Um, thankfully, in my kitchen, I don't have turnover. I've had the same woman working for me since I started the restaurant 19 years ago. But um, sometimes the challenges of having the same uh, or employees perhaps that have the same kind of work ethic that maybe we had. But having said that, you know, we understand where we are and um, they bring in something different. They bring a flavor that perhaps people from Canada or the States don't bring. We are fortunate to live in a place that's very powerful and energetic and has a lot of nature. So we always get over those challenges. Community is absolutely amazing here. Um, Anytime there's someone in need, everyone is always together. Um, my restaurant was destroyed about a month and a half ago by a storm. And this community, along with uh, other people from all over the world because of my GoFundMe, just came together. And even if they didn't give monetary donations, the support and the love that I received was unbelievable. And that happens time and time again. So the community comes together whenever someone is in need. And also, again, going back to the kids, even parents, like, so if I, if my kids need help or if they need to be picked up, you know, other parents will do it. So there's that community. So there's like the, uh, the community with all the children and all the parents, and there's the expat community of, the, of everyone else that's here. So there's definitely a sense of community. And I think that's what keeps the magic here in Bocas. Last eight years, I've had a car, and for me, it's extremely convenient. Obviously, I have kids, dogs, everything, um, and I live a little bit out of town. You know, cars here, they break down again and again and again. So that's just one of the, I guess that's one of the challenges too. But we just get them fixed again and again and again. So we do have a car, and it's convenient. And uh, Well, the restaurant whew, has such a big history, I, a long history. I've been here. It will celebrate 19 years in September. And this is my fifth location, but I still call it OM 6.0 because of the storm and we had to rebuild. So I've actually had six renovations, if you think about it. So uh, when I first started, I opened this restaurant. When I chose the location, I called my mom and I told her, I said, I found the location and she came and she helped me. And we worked literally, t you know, 14 hours, 15 hours a day opening this little restaurant, the side street restaurant on the other um, side of town and it was amazing and so <laughs> I keep moving as opportunities arise and then I you know finally ended up in this incredible spot over the ocean so I was very lucky and part of that I think I love being in this business because you just never know what's going to happen and we have so many colorful people that live in Bocas this thing you always come across people who are crazy and different and colorful and I think that's what makes Living here is so much fun. You know, it's uh, always, you just never know who's going to walk through the door. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, so I didn't even know I was going to open up an Indian restaurant when I got here. That wasn't even my, that wasn't my plan. My plan was to open up a cute little sandwich and salad shop on the beach somewhere. But as life happens, um, and surprises always, I decided to do these Taste of Indian Nights and so I did, so I called up my mom, of course, like, oh, okay, this is what I want to make. This is the menu. It was just a set menu. So of course she told me, but I realized that all the times that I spent with her in the kitchen, just sitting there with her and just watching her and watching her make fresh paneer and watching her make fresh yogurt and watching her make the masalas, 
even though I wasn't maybe doing it myself, I was always constantly watching her and she was, everything was homemade. And I would maybe prep some things for her. So I had a sense of, and I just used to watch her, her hands, never measured anything. So I always had a sense of that. And so when it came to actually doing it myself, I realized that I could, and I actually really liked it. And I didn't have to measure things. And I just kind of, and I just feel it. And that's what's really magical about Paulina too, that works for me. She has the same, maybe a little different touch, but she has the same idea and she understands. Um, and, and that was really cool. So that's all of that. Um, obviously, I thank my mother for. The recipes of um, all the Indian recipes are my mom and my aunts. So we have to definitely mention that because my aunt owned an Indian restaurant in Toronto and she gave my mom advice on how to run kind of a restaurant because we never had, I never had a restaurant in my life. Neither did my mom. So we kind of took all of that information together. When I first got here, I liked to party a lot. So and this, was, this was a great spot for partying. I mean, that's where I met all our old friends that were here because we were all young, we we're all single. And so we used to have a great time, uh, like obviously hanging out with my children. So when we go out to the beach house, we were disconnected completely from everything. And we love to do all the water sports, swimming and just eating. And, having fun and just spending some quality time together. Oh, I do yoga classes, Zumba, of course, love my Zumba. And time from time to time, like I've done a mosaic class. So there's always something going on here and there's a lot to choose from. For the most part, as a single woman back then, I felt very safe. Now more and more people have come, um, you know, there have been incidences here, but I think that's everywhere. I don't think it's more here in Bocas or less here in Bocas, I think just uh, comparatively it's a it's a safe place uh, to live and I think that was important especially also to have children I'm Jenny Lane from Dallas Texas and I'm Garland Lane um, where are you from I'm from the same place <laughs> she's from <laughs> Dallas we did come on Jackie's tour uh, but we found Bocas kind of on our own because we knew we wanted a beach. We knew we wanted a Caribbean beach. And we had that dream of the, you know, white sands and crystal blue waters and jungle all in one. And so we went searching for it. And that's how we came to find Bocas. We've just explored a lot of other Caribbean places, but we were really in love with Panama because of two, two oceans. If you did want to do the Pacific and you did want to do the Caribbean, um, the because of Jackie's tours, we felt so much more safe about you know the real estate market the economic um security with panama the you know expat community the real estate everything she made she answered all our questions that you would normally have when considering to to retire in a place uh we came to bocas um about a year before we moved here we were at an airbnb and I just kept wanting to explore and explore to find my dream place. And as exploring, we found the island plantation. And I was like, this is the most perfect place, but it's a resort. And sure enough, about nine months after our trip, we had been looking online for places to live and they had an apartment for rent at Island Plantation on Bluff Beach. And so we were so impressed with what we saw that we went ahead and rented six months up front. It was such a a reasonable price it, we figured if it turned out to be bad we didn't lose a ton of money on the yeah, deal it was if well we, worth yeah if it was not what we expected we live in uh, uh, like i said a resort we have full access to the swimming pool the beach the you know bar the uh, everything and we are on the third floor so we overlook the ocean and it's fully furnished all bills paid we're on an eco resort so it's all solar panels and rainwater and it's 450 a month with everything included and we're ocean view so we we fell in love with it we've already signed another six month lease the apartment is a one bedroom one bath um, with a kitchen it's not huge but it's all we need for us two and our kitty cat and uh, we actually would stay there for the rest of our life if we could but we realized that you know we probably want to stay here a little bit longer than maybe the apartments available so we did buy a beach lot directly across from the resort and uh, we are just now in the plans of trying to start with an architect and do Airbnb or bed and breakfast with it. Uh, Bluff Beach is gorgeous, but it is a little bit of a hike into town, which we like because 
town is is hopping and popping and you know has great places to eat and um, great tourist community and so forth but we are out on bluff beach is about a what do you say six kilometers to six town. kilometers yeah. the road is pretty bumpy and it's not but we did buy a car here they told us not to because it'll rust within three or four years so we just bought a used little jeep that you know if it does fall apart in four years it does but there is a bus that comes out here every hour on the hour that's three dollars that you can take um, but what we have found since we've been here in the six months we've been here they are planning a new road that's going to go around the our uh, island completely they have a brand new hospital that i have had the fortunate um, time to visit three times. <laughs> have yet to pay a bill. <laughs> and never paid one red cent. And they were state of the art equipment, very, very well staffed, very friendly, in and out. Um, probably one of the best hospital uh, services I've ever had as far as hospital services go. As well as uh, we just found out they're bringing electricity out to our lot. They um, are. Expanding the airport. Expanding the airport into an international airport. So they're putting all the infrastructure into Bocas that really made us feel that we should invest in it. Yeah, they're just little hidden spots. You Somebody will say, oh, have you tried Oliver's? No, where's that at? And well, you got to go around this corner and it's back behind this little building and everything. And then you go in there and it's just like, oh, you're the one that gets all the good stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> There's a lot of U.S. brands here. Um, it's just a bit more expensive. The stores will carry something. And then you won't see it for two months and then it'll be back on the shelf. And the, the community, um, you know, I thought it's going to be a younger party and type group here. Certainly there is, but that's more tourists. The expats here have been so awesome. We have finally found our little clutch of expats and um, it's a close little knit community, right? You know, all within closeness of us. Everybody here is so incredibly helpful. The locals are so sweet. They are, everybody's a team because when you're on an island, you have to rely on each other. And so that comes across um, in so many ways. Like there is just one little road into town and it's a beach road, it's sand. And so every so often people get stuck at everybody from their cars, the taxi cars, the people in the, you know, uh, hotels will come out everybody's pushing so it's like a, a really great team uh very welcoming here i'm lorelei cusin and i'm the owner of super gourmet in bocas del toro la isla cologne and i've owned this store proudly for 20 years i originally started in San Francisco, California, 1993, on a one-year hiatus from corporate America. And it ended up being a, just a year of traveling and exploring and finding Panama, which is also where I found my husband. Bocas del Toro is made up of many, many, many islands, five major islands that are inhabited. Um, and those islands are fairly close by boat. There's only one island that actually has roads and cars. And that's this island, Isla Colon. I live on Isla Carinero, which is actually just right there. And it's seriously, if you walk out the front door of Super Gourmet, you will see Isla Carinero, but you will also see Salarte and you'll also see Bastimentos. So, and then looking to the right, you'll see Cristobal. And those are the main islands that are inhabited by majority of the population of the archipelago. What's important to understand is once you do arrive on any of the other islands, you are going to be on foot. So boating is a way of life. This is, we've never owned a car in Panama. We've lived here 20 years. Um, the taxis are very inexpensive. You can go from Super Gourmet, this deli, to Bluff Beach, for example, in a taxi. Okay, they all have there's no four-wheel drive necessary and so on and so forth. Or you can go to the other side of the island, which is Drago. Um, and you can do all this by taxi. I can go down the street for 65 cents in a taxi if I'm too lazy to walk or if it's raining. Okay. So um, it's very easy to get around even if you don't own a car. The challenges would be not knowing that this is the lifestyle you wanted to begin with. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that's active. It's a lifestyle that has to conform to instantaneous mother nature giveth, taketh away 
So one day it could be absolutely stunning and beautiful sandy beaches, and the next day it could be torrential rain. So you have to be prepared for that. And But I think most importantly, people come with something in their minds or a, an expectation, and it's not exactly going to fit everybody's expectations. So I think knowing and understanding the lifestyle of living on an island before you actually decide to permanently stay or stay long term is very, very important. Many things have changed over the years, the almost 20 years of Super Gourmet's life, and most significantly was the year 2020. What happened here was, in a very small community, almost all of our businesses had to close. So in order to survive and stay here, Super Gourmet collaborated with over 40 of those small businesses, brought in sauces from some of our favorite restaurants, for example, brought in gourmet vegetarian burgers from another favorite restaurant as well, brought in the homemade gelatos and pastas by yet another favorite. And then other pop-ups happened in 2020. People who had a thought about what they might want to do in order to stay in Boca del Toro. All these people are typically between 35 and 45 years old and just have wonderful ideas, but there was no place for them to actually have a shop. So what a lot of people did was they created and perfected how to product something such as kombucha or kefir, cheeses and yogurts and juices and such things like that, and then brought them into Super Gourmet. Now, thankfully, they're able to sell those in other places as well. Other restaurants, even they've even opened small shops, um, but we still collaborate with these 40 wonderful, um, enthusiastic and adorable people. The main reason that we were drawn to Bocas del Toro was because of the amazing archipelago and because we're sailors. Um, we're boaters. We're maritime. We love the ocean. Um, we love the tropics. Uh, we love the fact that it never gets below 70 and it never, very rarely goes over 90. We've always loved the fact that in Bocas del Toro, you have jungle meets ocean and you do not find that very much in other parts of the world, at least not the inhabitable parts of the world. And you can find that here on almost any of the islands, the ocean meets the jungle. <laughs>